Hi everybody, it's Alexi. Um, I am uh, doing a video today about how to do your makeup for Frank Inverter. Uh, this is for my cast of Interchangeable Parts, who is currently, um, per I guess, performing um, at Tri City in Largo slash Clearwater, and we do it every Saturday night. So if you're in the area, feel free to check and see if we're there. Uh, most likely, unless it's a holiday, we are. So, um, this is for my cast. So, it's my personal interpretation of how to do Frank and Furter's makeup. I've had a lot of questions about it, and um, so I decided to do a video. It makes it easier than having everybody come over to my house and watch me do it. Um, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of different stuff that you're going to need. I've already put on a, a base, though it's not the best base, but um, it's something that you can find at any uh, store. If you go to CVS, Walmart, whatever. Um, I'm using the... Oop, you can't see it. Uh, that sucks. Okay. Well, it's the Dream Matte Mousse. There we go. You can see it now. Uh, this is the Dream Mousse... Um, sorry, Smooth Mousse. Um, it's not as good. It's kind of liquidy. It's not as good as say the Dream Matte Mousse, which is one of my favorites. Sorry, I'm fumbling right now. Um, this one's one of my favorites. It's the Dream Matte Mousse. And I apologize for being so bright. There we go. This is the Dream Matte Mousse um, in my own shade. I use Light One is my personal shade. Um, so, yeah. Find your own personal shade when you're doing Frankenfurter's makeup. Um, you really shouldn't necessarily do white face. I mean, I'm a person against white face personally. I know there's a lot of people out there that do white face, but I'm going to show you how to do it without white face. Um, so, complexion matching uh, foundation. Put that on. Alright, I already have mine on. Your next step is that you're going to need you're going to need your gel eyeliner. I got mine from Maybelline, it's the Eye Studio, and I love this stuff. And it's pretty much waterproof, so you have to scrub it off to get it off. So I highly recommend this. It's only a couple dollars at the store. Uh, I also use this. It is a bruise pack. I use it for the lipstick. It never comes off. If it does, you're usually eating something like oily. So I use the red and the black for um, doing the lipstick. It's the red, black. Um, I also, for the eyeshadows, use white. I can't see it very well because of that. Um, there's a dark gray and the black. So you're going to use those colors for your eyes. You can also use a white pencil. You can get these pretty much anywhere. Um, I think I got this one at Avid's Accessories for like a dollar. So these things aren't really expensive. You can get them for pretty cheap. Um, this goes in your waterline. It makes your eyes look a lot bigger. So. Um, by the way, the gel makeup comes with this brush. It's not awesome or anything. You're not going to use it for anything else other than your gel, but it comes with it so you don't have to worry about that. Next is a lip brush. I use my lip brush, obviously, for or my lips. <laughs> um, this actually is a foundation brush, but um, I can't find my lip brush, so this will work too. Um, Mostly for a lip brush, it's usually um, flat on the top. That's the difference. But um, you can use this one. I'll show you that. There you go. Um, you can use this. It's not a big deal. Something that's nice and smooth. It's not going to spread apart and break. Um, this is the eyeshadow brush that I'm using. This is the small eyeshadow brush, as you can see. Um, this is used for all my darks. Uh, you don't want to put your light and your darks together because then you're going to have to wash a brush like five billion times while you're doing your makeup. You don't want to do that. So this is for the gray and the black. 
It's a smaller one. And then my larger one here, it's kind of more poofy. And this is my larger brush I use for the white around um, for the high sh highlights. And then we have your blush brush. And I use this blush brush I got at um, from work. So, but you can pick them up anywhere. Uh, you want something that's really nice and fluffy. This one I flattened out as much as I can so that I can get a nice triangle. And you'll see sometimes I'll squeeze it together like this to, you know, have more control. You're also going to need this. And I use, I use Ben Nye because it's available to me. Uh, this is in terracotta. And it is going to be your... Uh, contour, so something brown. This isn't as light as it seems. If I pull it back, you can see it's not necessarily light, but it's not necessarily really dark either. Um, so you can use that for your contour. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. I haven't actually used these grays and blacks yet, so it's going to be fun. Uh, otherwise, I have some extras here that are in proper colors. So if it's not the right color, I'll show you the proper colors to use. Alright. So first I'm going to start off with your gel and your gel brush. Grab some. Now what you're going to do adjust my mirror here is you're going to line up your gel brush with the edge of your nose. Now don't put it down yet, just line it up and then slowly put it up against your, your face and you'll make a dot. Same thing with the other side. Now I'm pretty sure that my nose is actually kind of crooked so sometimes my lines end up a little bit off but you should get um, proper placement for your eyebrows. So then you're going to go ahead and just start drawing your eyebrows. Now you want your eyebrow to be above your actual eyebrow. Okay, uh, you don't want to go into your eyebrow, under your eyebrow, anything like that. They, the way that they did it was have a, a thinner eyebrow just above his own eyebrow, which would be uh, Tim Curry, who played Frankenfurter. You go straight just above the eyebrow and make the shape that you want. And then we'll come back to your eyebrows later. So I'm going to start here, slight dip, and out. Make sure it's nice and long and almost to the corner here. So that's kind of where you want to go. Because when, when you finish your makeup, you're going to extend this out to that line. Okay? There we go. Now try and mirror that on the other side. Now, my left is a lot harder for me to do than my right. So, again, I might fumble on this one. There we go. So you have relatively the same shape eyebrow. Um, these are going to be your actual eyebrows during the show, so you want to try and make them as close as possible. Um, but you, if you mess it up, don't freak out if it's just slight. You know, like this one's a little more dipped than the other, so I'm just going to level it out a little bit. Ta da! Alright. So what you're going to do from here is you're going to set that just to the side because you're going to use it again. And you're going to grab your small brush. And then you're going to grab your gray. Now I'm going to test this out really fast to see how well it works. That's about how well this one works. Mm, I don't like it. So. I'm going to be using a color from my palette. It's right here. The gray that I use right there. It's about the same color. 
and I'm making a mess all over my table. You can't see it, but I am. <laughs> so you're going to grab a little bit of your gray, and you're just going to follow. Now this is where the black is going to go later, but I like to put in some gray there too, because it kind of sets up the shape of your entire eye. And what you want to do is you want to take a little bit of this and lightly and lightly follow it straight down. This will also be in black, but I kind of want to put it where I'm going to see it. So now you can see kind of the shape. And you, what you want it to do is you want it to go from here straight down your nose but you only want it to go to the corner of your eye. Right there, line it up to your nose. Okay? I'm going to do your other eye. You know, a lot of people when they do makeup tutorials, they tend to um, do the first side first, but figured it would be easier to show you that I too have to do both sides and it's a lot more difficult to match. So there you go. There's there's that setup. So now you have that, you can start filling stuff in. Now remember that part's gonna be in black later. So go ahead and fill in the rest of your eye with the gray. Now, your eyelid is going to be black, so you don't have to take it all the way down if you don't want to. And when you get to the edges, you want to be a little lighter with it, kind of fan it, like kind of lift like that. And it tends to make it a little more um, feathered, so it's not as an abrupt line. You don't want it to be super abrupt because then uh, it's going to be obvious, you know, so you want it to kind of blend in even though it's such a dark color. Make sure you get right next to the corner of your eye. You can do the same thing, pounce it, and just kind of lightly pull it away from your eye, feathering it. Yep. Yeah. Now you have where this line goes. You're going to take it from the corner of your eye and lightly like that. Fill it in. Yeah. Make sure the line is nice and straight. Yeah. That one can be pretty stark. It's nice to be able to feather it, but sometimes it's difficult when you have to try and make a line this way. So fill in the rest of your eye. And as soon as you have all of that filled in, I'm going to rinse repeat, other side. By the way, you can get some of these colors that I'm pulling out, the especially the white, because um, you use a lot of it. Um, this is NK HD eyeshadow. You can get it at uh, Ava's Accessories if you have Ava's Accessories. Um, it's $2.99, so it's really cheap. Uh, I wouldn't go buying extremely expensive stuff as long as it is nice and stark. Uh, it doesn't matter how expensive it is. <laughs> You're going to be using a lot of it, so don't buy too much, you know, to buy something that's really expensive because there's no need to do that. 
Okay, so once you have your grayon, you have the foundation of what you're going to do. So then you're going to take your black. Now make sure that you're finished with your gray before you go into black because it's going to be a lot harder to go back to gray with this brush because you're only using one brush. Now if you have two brushes, same size, whatever, and you're able to um, use a different brush, whatever, it doesn't matter, but I only have one brush. so. I haven't tested the other black yet and I'm not even going to try. I have a black that's also in the same color palette and I'm going to use it. Um, but feel free to test out any eyeshadows that you currently have to see which ones work best. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your black and you're going to go into the lid of your eye up to where it, like right here, where it creases. Okay? So you're going to do like an arc around your eye. And I start usually in the crease to give me a definition of where I need to go. Just like that. Now don't go beyond it because that looks bad. <laughs> looks like you're crying and you're sad and you don't want sad eyes as Frankenfurter. You want happy eyes, crazy eyes, whatever you want, just not sad eyes. That happens later. <laughs> okay? So get in there nice and dark into your eye. And some people can forget the corners of their eyes and they don't have color. So make sure that you really get into the corner of your eye but don't go beyond it. It's hard to um, not get makeup right here but that will kind of, it won't look very good if you do that. We are going to put some makeup there, but I wouldn't necessarily let it bleed down because then it's going to end up looking a bit messy. So, all right, now that you've got your shape, you want to fill that in. So it's nice and dark. and then repeat on the other side. Sorry I'm making fun faces if you're noticing. <laughs> it's kind of something that happens when I do my makeup. I see how that came down. You don't necessarily want that. That kind of ruins the line. There we go. You can fix it um, Usually I can just wipe it slightly and it comes off because of the foundation. Um, but if you start running out of foundation, you're going to want to put a little extra underneath. And that'll fix it. If you ever have a really bad mess up somewhere, wipe off as much as you can. Um, and then just reapply your foundation and anything else that's around it. You don't have to take off all your makeup. You don't have to live with it. You can fix it. All right. There we go. Now make sure you're mostly even on both sides, which I think I'm mostly even. Okay. So I'm about to do grab, um, I'm going to start working a little more detail on my eyes. So I'm going to take my white and I'm going to color in on the waterline. Now, if you don't know what the waterline is, that's right there on the inside of your eye. Now you want to color this on there. The rest of your makeup is going to be done on the outside of your eye to make your eye look bigger. Okay, so I'm going to put the, wa the white on the waterline. Now the white helps extend the eye. It makes it look like it's part of the white of the eye instead of having pink ringed eyes or anything like that. Since your eyes are so important when you're playing a lead character, especially a lead character and as a Frank, people are going to be looking at your eyes. It, you have all this makeup on your eyes. People are going to look at them. And so having bigger eyes and expressive eyes um, really helps out. So the bigger they are, 
better. I apologize if my eyes go a little wonky. I do have a lazy eye, so um, I fight a lot with it. So it decides to ponder. You know why? <laughs> All right. And sometimes it feels like it's not all the way going on, but it is. See, there's white now. Okay. It's not a huge difference, so if you don't have it, it's not a big deal, but it helps a little bit. So you want to take your gel again. I hope you didn't put it away yet. And firstly, um, you're going to ring your eyes um, in a cat-like fashion. So, you take your finger, you can pull your eye back, I tend to do that, and just right across the top, slightly extended from the side of the eye, going across. And once you hit right next to the eye, you're going to lift it just a little bit because you want it pointy and extend it lightly. Uh, it's probably a little too far, but I can live with it. <laughs> what you want to do again after you finish that, go underneath the eye. Now don't get too close to the edge, otherwise it's going to look make your eye small. So just go right underneath the eye. Now normally if you're doing normal makeup like Janet, uh, you want to stop your eyeliner at the middle of your eye right by where the uh, pupil is right there. So that would be the end right there. Don't go any further um, than that. You want to stop it right there. But as a Frank, uh, as Columbia, um, even magenta a little bit, you want to extend it all the way. You want to make it a cat eye. Um, the whole eye is, is uh, ringed in black. So, now once you get over here, it's a little tricky. So, very careful. Sometimes you're right where it kind of gets that sleepy eye uh, thing underneath where you have the rings. Sometimes you get a little creepy skin wise and uh, you don't want to smear as much. So, that, and then join it with the little extension that you made and it makes a little cat eye. Okay, now this side where I didn't connect it all the way, I'm just going to bend it just a little bit so it doesn't have a problem with it. Ta-da, cat eyes. And again, other side. Now you notice I have different technique for each side. Depends upon uh, how I'm holding my hands <laughs> as to which way that I do it. Again, right at the corner of the eye, it tends to get a little crepey. So, careful with that. Yeah. Now you see that one did a little thing. So I'm going to grab a little paper towel, try to fix it a little bit. Again, don't lose your foundation. Don't let it go too far because you might need it. Now you're going to end up having to match these. So sometimes one side might be thicker than the other. 
this side is obviously thicker than this side, so you're going to have to go back in and thicken up the other side. If there's any mess ups, sometimes you can just fix them by thickening it, what have you. But you don't want to go too much and end up having these huge ringed eyes because you screwed up like five times. So um, just try and fix it if it looks like you can fix it. Fix it that way. If not, you know, you have your foundation, you have, you know, a paper towel, a wipe, whatever. Um, so do finishing touch-ups on the rings of your eyes. If there's any skin showing right around the lash line, you want to try and cover that now. There's your ring, guys. Now, you also want to take your gel. Sometimes you can do this with um, your all your eyes with uh, liquid, but if you're doing it with a liquid, you want to make sure that uh, you keep your eyes closed until it's dry. Otherwise, you're going to get actually what happened in the film, which is a ring that goes right here. But it'll take away some of your makeup from your eye, and you don't want to have that happen. And sometimes um, people have different kinds of eyelids, and they end up, it gets all over the place. So keep your eyes closed, and we will create the look later on that happened by accident, I'm sure. Um, if it wasn't an accident, it was perfectly placed. <laughs> um, but uh, pretty much we're going to re recreate the accident that happened, I believe, anyway, during the film. So you take your gel again. Now you keep looking. You might see me look down. I'm just refilling in the pot, just tapping in there, getting some more. So you're going to start in the middle, usually that's where I start. Sometimes you can start on the side, whatever. I find it easier to start in the middle. And right where you put the line of your black powder, you're going to place your gel in a semicircle um, at the, the crease of your eye. Okay, place that right there. And let's do a little semicircle. And it's going to match up here and over here. You don't have to completely connect them, but for it to look like it happened properly. Yeah. See, now that is now darker, much darker than the rest of it. And it also helps the definition of the black and the gray. The other side. And luckily I did that because now I saw a problem right there. Ta da! Fixed. Um, one more time. Nice and dark. Alright. There's that. Now I realized that when I did my black powder, I had forgotten to go back in and do my eyebrows. So grab your black, go into the eyebrow. Now just the eyebrow, don't go too far with this. Right the second, okay? You want to go just into the eyebrow and darken it up. Because you know what? Tim Curry's eyebrows were black. So that aided in the color of the full makeup. Now I do apologize, there's some people in the house, so um, there's going to be some, some noise in the background. I apologize. Alright, so it's going to go right here and extend it just to that line just below the, uh, the eyebrow. Now you're going to take that same black very carefully. You're going to follow that gray line that we made earlier. Just slowly extend it down the tip of your, down to your nose. Yeah, just like that. And then you're also going to take that same spot and just kind of go in and connect it in a arc from your eyebrow. So it's not obvious that that's right. 
because you want it to seem like above it is your eyebrow. Yeah? And just very lightly extend like that. Okay? Same with the other side. Now we're going to take it from the top of the faux eyebrow and move it down your nose. Just like that. So it's right at the tip. Now sometimes you can just kind of pounce a little bit or whatnot to get that point. Now on the other side of my nose it didn't come out as thin, so I might have to thicken that part up. Sometimes it sucks when you get it perfect and then you kind of have to mess it up because you didn't get it right on the other side. <laughs> and connect them. Yeah. Just like that. Okay. Now you will want to put on some mascara. I can't seem to find my waterproof, so I'm taking a risk by putting on water-resistant mascara. Know that water-resistant mascara is not waterproof. Um, it means that it runs, like, not as quickly. But honestly, this stuff is like regular mascara. It's going to run. So you really should wear not a uh, waterproof makeup, um, especially mascara. If you can. Um, so you're just going to go in and darken your lashes a little bit. And you can get underneath too. Now, don't you hate it when men, they have longer lashes, so they look gorgeous if you put um, mascara on them? Well, Frank Furt was played by a man, so try really hard to make your lashes look awesome. Now, if you can't, you know, they're far away. They can't see you. Sometimes I don't wear mascara, but it's really good to wear it. It completes the look and it makes your eyes look even more stark than they would have been. Definitely to make it look a little more um, full, if you get the side over here more elongated and thick, it tends to look like more, you have more lashes. Now when you're going underneath your eye, a lot of times you can really get a lot of mascara like touching your your face. You don't want to do that. Just be very careful to not get it all over your face. I've seen people who uh, have had to completely redo their makeup because they got it all over just like that. Um, now Tyra Banks has always said, let it dry and then you can just flake it off. We'll try it. Um, actually, we can't try it because the next thing I have to do is right there. <laughs> Gonna pat a little bit. Oh, look, came right off. I'm gonna put a little more foundation over top so that it's um, not as obvious. Just like that. Now you might see me pouncing a little bit, and that's how I kind of do my foundation, it makes it thicker and you can't see through it as much. Just like that. Just touching that because I've been touching my face a lot. And part of 
having a cheaper foundation. Sometimes you have to touch it up more if it's not set yet. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to grab your fluffy bigger brush. It's not like a it's it's not like a blush brush. That's much bigger. See how small much smaller that is. Okay, but it's still an eye brush, but it's a big eye brush. So. You probably use like a smaller uh, blush brush. I like the control that this gives me. I'm just gonna fill it up that with my white and go right underneath the eye. Now, sometimes this might be easier to do if you don't already have your black on, being your eyeliner. So you might want to try it that way instead, and do your powders and then your liners. I personally just did it this way today, but I'm going to follow the line of my eye and extend it all the way into my hair, just like that. The corner, all the way. And then I'm going to extend it down to my cheek if I do this. All the way to the apple of my cheek. This is to make your cheekbones look amazingly big. It's your highlight. If your bones were there, they would stand out and they would uh, light would hit them and make them look lighter than the rest of your face. So they would look white in a way as compared to the rest of your face. So that's what we're trying to do here with this makeup. And this makeup was designed to be like a uh, drag queen's makeup. And this is what they do. So um, I love my drag queens. They're amazing. I've learned so much from them. So thanks, guys. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Underneath your eye. Now you don't necessarily have to do underneath your eye, but honestly, I love doing it underneath my eye. It makes me look less tired. It covers up those under eye bags that you get. You look awesome. When you're done. <laughs> now I've also chosen a shimmery white. You don't have to. I like it. It picks up more light, especially when the lights hit you when you're doing your show. Right around the apple of your cheek. Now this is where a lot of the people get that white thing from. The Frank has white face on. It's all those highlights that he does. Now you'll see that it's here, right at the, the apple of the cheek, and it extends straight back following your bone. If you need to, you can always touch your face to find your cheekbones. Okay? Or you can just smile. Find the apple. Okay? And once that's done, you're going to grab one more white, and you're going to slowly but carefully go down the bridge of your nose. This will also accentuate the eyes, seeing that there's white there, and also make your nose look thinner as long as you do this right. You want to make it just white on the very ridge of your nose. Okay, take more, right on the chin. and then follow the line of your jaw. Now, I personally don't have a strong jaw. Men typically have stronger jaws than us women. So you want to make your jaw stronger, and in order to do that, you make a highlight, as if the light is hitting it. So extend it up as you're following your bone structure, your jaw bone. Make sure it's not too stark. Better. 
it if you need to. Other side. Also, kind of put it around my lips a little bit because I want them to stand out. Just on the edges. Because he actually has a little line right here that's darker. Makes his uh, lips look more pouty. So if you don't have as pouty of a lip, you can also do a slight uh, color just underneath your chin. Right there. See how that looks different? There's no difference when I'm not pulling my lip down. It just looks bigger. All right. Also, uh, men typically have a, a more strong forehead. So right where you see how there's light right here, I'm going to follow that a little bit. Just around there. Getting a little strength to my forehead. A little bit on the bridge of my brow as well. Because men typically have stronger brow bones. Middle of your brow and then up. Okay. Middle of your brow and up. Okay, so that's pretty much all you need for highlight. If you want to go more, fine. Not, it's not a big deal. Alright. switch out. I have a, a mirror. It's just below because um, when I film this, it films it mirrored. So I can't quite do my makeup that way. <laughs> okay, so you're going to take your uh, terracotta or your brown. Um, you can also use a bronzer or um, any type of uh, nice brown that you have. It should be super dark. Um, just Lightly dark. It should be probably maybe four shades darker, maybe five shades darker than your natural skin tone. It's not that much darker. So uh, take that in your brush. That's your blush brush. Pinch your brush together so it makes a little line. And you go right underneath. Your uh, your bone structure in the hollow of your bones. Don't go into the mouth because that will look weird. Keep a couple fingers away from there. See about there. Now he has a triangle, so there's going to be more color back here than there is up here. Okay. And if you don't want to start, you can loosen up the brush a bit. Do it that way, it'll spread out the color. Okay? And you can see the difference in the shape of your face. Do it to the other side. might see me pouncing a lot too, but that kind of helps with the shading um, and not, for me anyway, it helps um, blend a little bit. Please remember I'm not a makeup artist for anyone else out there that doesn't know me. I'm not a makeup artist, um, however, a lot of people have asked me how I do my makeup for uh, my show, and so that's why I'm doing it. So. You know, this isn't the end-all be-all for makeup. You know, claim to know everything about it. <laughs> so if I get comments on this saying, you're doing this wrong. Thank you <laughs> for letting us know.
rotate your cheeks. Go underneath your jaw, just barely, right at the tip of your chin. Yeah. Swoop it back and forth just a little bit. Don't go above. It's gonna make a bad line. That's gonna be also with the, the tar spot. And follow along your drawing. This is something that um, Tim Curry had to do. It helps make your jaw a little more defined. You can go up until about where your, gen your chin is supposed to stop into your neck. Don't go into your neck. But if you're if you like have a little bit of a sagging like I do, um, I'm getting older. <laughs> um, then you can go a little further than your current neckline. So you bring it to the end of your um, jaw and then up just by your ear. Give it a nice strong line. Okay, other side. Now you may not think that this makes a difference, but it really does. As soon as you get it all on, it really makes a difference. And it really helps define your jaw. People can really see um, all of your movements in your face. Okay. You're also going to take more and right on your temple. I'm going to just pounce it a little bit. Right on your temple. And go into your hairline, it's not a big deal. It makes stand out just a little bit more on your bones and it makes your, your cheek stand out a bit more too. Other side. This is another area for the riffraffs too. But riffraff has a little more going on um, contour wise. Okay, now that you have all your contour done, oh, I almost forgot, your nose. You're just going to take a little bit on your brush, you're going to pinch it as much as you can and very carefully place it against the bridge or next bridge of your nose. Like that. Other side. Now be very careful with this because you don't want to overdo it. Even drag it down just a little bit Not too much because it'll make your nose wide. <laughs> then a little on the end of your nose. If you need a blend that you can. Maybe there's a little more foundation if I can. Here's your contour. And then the only thing you have left is your bit. So you're going to grab your brush. I, again, I am using a um, concealer brush. You can use a lip brush or a concealer brush. Either way it works. They're very fine um, in the way of uh, their little hairs. And um, so they stay together a lot better. And that's what you're looking for. You're looking for something that really stays together and is, has a point to it. See how you can get a nice fine line with it. That's what you're looking for. So you're going to take your black. And again, I'm using, um, let's see, Cinema Secrets. It is used for the bruise pack. So if you're looking for it, the bruise pack from Cinema Secrets. This stuff stays on really well. I'm just get a little bit on my brush. Just a little bit. And I start usually on the bottom part of my lip. You can go either way. But go make sure you go right against the line of your lip. Don't go above it. Sometimes you can go a little bit of, uh, a little bit below it or outside of it, but not too far because otherwise you can look like a clown. So
or right along the edge. You can also do this with a liner, but I, pers I personally prefer this stuff. It gives me a lot more control. And it stays on really well. I highly recommend it against against using normal lipstick because um, it comes off really easy. And you don't want to spend all night reapplying your lipstick. Now for the upper lip, sometimes I tend to go out slightly out of the line because I have a scar here. You can see right there. And it messes up my lip line, so I have to go outside of it just to make them match. Make sure you can see it. This is where you can really change the lips shape. Um, you can make them a lot more full. Now, that's the first rough line, so you're going to want to match them as best as you can. See, my, uh, the side where my scar is always gives me problems. And you may have the same problem too. You never know. You may have a lip that's a little different sized. And it doesn't really matter what's going on on the inside. If it's too thick, it doesn't matter because you're going to cover up in red anyway. So as soon as you are comfortable with the shape of your lip, you can grab your red. Grab a paper towel, wipe off your black, so it get, doesn't get into your red. Make sure they're nice and straight. And grab a little bit of your red. And fill in your lip. As you can see with Cinema Secrets, um, it tends to, if you have any black or anything, it tends to just take it right out. If you go over it with something else, or it blends with it. So it's not a big deal if you have anything inside your lip, it's not a big deal. It'll cover it up. Okay, so as soon as your lipstick's done, you gotta do what every girl does. Take your finger, put it in your mouth, pull. As soon as your lips are together, it'll take all the excess lipstick off. Now you're not gonna get it on your teeth. So there you have it, Frank. Makeup complete. Um, and oh, oh, it's not complete yet. You know what I forgot to do? Sideburns. Now, if you have sideburns, it's not a big deal. Um, but I don't think anyone has the sideburns that Frank has anymore. Um, you can do this with your gel makeup, which won't run. You can also do this with your lip color, your black lip color, 
Um, if you do it with your black lip color, I highly suggest that you also uh, set it with powder, uh, with your black powder for your eyebrows and whatnot. Um, I highly suggest you do that. Since I don't have an awful lot of time, and honestly, when you do your makeup um, and your eye, your excuse me, your uh, sideburns with the gel, it tends to take some time. But I wipe my brush clean. I have this now, and you just go into the hair a little bit from your own hair, and just brush the black into it. Especially if it's gonna your hair is gonna partially be down. You want to take it just to the end of your jawbone. And just like I have a smaller sideburn, so I'm gonna bring mine just ahead of my natural sideburn and bring it down. His sideburns actually come down pretty far. So I typically take it almost down to the edge of my jaw. Just to fill it in really light strokes. You don't want it to be, because it still has to have that hair look, so you don't want it to be like flat when you do it. You don't want to be like this. You want to do it more pointed like that. So you can get more hair-like quality to it. And then make sure it's kind of rounded out because his kind of rounded by his jaw. Now the best way to make sure that these are right is to follow the film. I don't have the film in front of me, so I don't know about the sideburns as to where they are placed. Um, if you find they are placed a little better, you know, and you have a, a better spot for them, then feel free to say, hey, by the way, this is how far they go down. You post it on the video um, with a screen capture of the picture so that everyone can see it. Okay. And do the same thing to the other side. Now, the reason I do this is because I do wear a wig um, for the show. If you weren't going to wear a wig for the show, you're going to wear your own natural hair, you would skip this step. Or uh, if you wanted to do your own natural hair sideburns, um, you could do that as well. Just make sure you have a color matching uh, color, which is kind of hard to do with natural hair uh, color-wise. It's really hard to find like blonde. I know that there is blonde powder out there for your, like, say your eyebrows but I don't think it would be stark enough on your skin to create the effect that you want. Again, I'm going slightly ahead of my own natural sideburn. And I tend to actually have um, my sideburns are actually quite low. So I always have to incorporate my own sideburns in. And then make sure you make it curve. Right around the same spot. Where's the other side? You kind of want them to be even. So as careful and even as possible. Whereas if you have uneven sideburns, you'll be like, what? What happened to you? You know? So it's a bit more uneven on the other side. So what do I have to do? I have to fill in this side, the side that isn't as uneven to make it match. Sometimes it actually ends up looking a little more natural that way. There.
just fill in my hair just a little bit more. Just in case the wig moves. And now, the Frank makeup is complete. So, um, I'll try to put a picture of me in full makeup and full hair and all that as soon as I can. Um, hopefully I'll put it on this video. So, enjoy. I hope you enjoyed uh, doing your Frank makeup with me. And I really hope to see some pictures of you guys and to figure out my cast. I really hope to see you at the shows. Fabulous makeup. And um, if you need anything else, please post right down here. And I'll also try and post a link to our cast page in case you were interested in coming to see our cast at the Tri-City Plaza, which is current. <laughs> uh, if it changes, I'll be sure to post as well on our on this video right here. So enjoy yourselves. Thank you so much for watching.